In contrast to PCA, which searches for the underlying basis which summarizes the variance distribution of the data, independent component analysis is instead searching for a basis which unmixes some complex signal into a set of statistically independent components. But what do we mean by independent in this context? The goal of this video lecture will therefore be to define statistical independence and how it relates to biomedical signals. Please reference notebook 5.3 for written notes. Two events, A and B, are independent if information on the value of A does not give any information on the value of B, and vice versa. To explain what this means, let's look again at the example data set of features describing boys and girls, and revise a few concepts on probability. We can first estimate the probability that any random sample from the data set will return a girl. We have 24 samples in total, and 12 of these are girls. So 12 out of 24 is a half, and so the probability of selecting a girl is 0.5. Let's now jointly consider another variable, film preference. This table shows the spread of film preferences separated by gender, where gender is represented along each row and films in each column. The first thing to notice and remember is that in this example, spread is the same for each gender. So you have the same values in each row for each column. Notice also that we can calculate our different probabilities by summing over rows and columns of this table. So the probability of selecting a girl can be calculated from the total number of samples in the row divided by the total number of samples for the whole table. Using the same reasoning, can you calculate the probability that we sample a person whose favourite film is comedy? Please stop the video and answer this question in the Keats quiz. The answer will be given there. Each of these probabilities that we just calculated are examples of marginal probabilities. The probability of some specific event occurring outside of any consideration of other events. For gender, we estimate the probability of boys or girls by summing all elements in that row and dividing by the total. For movies, we instead sum all elements within the column and again divide by the total. What should we do, on the other hand, if we're interested in the joint probability that we sample a girl whose favourite film is comedy? Joint probabilities are instead estimated by calculating the proportion of samples that meet this exact combination to fall in some specific cell in the table. So for this combination, we must look for the cell which represents girls who like comedy, which is here. What proportion of our data set is this? Please answer this in the Keats quiz. Finally, let's consider what happens when we're interested in the conditional probability of some outcome, given that we already know something about the sample. For example, what if we want the probability that we sample a person who prefers comedy if we already know that they're a girl? In this case, we only have 12 degrees of freedom, 12 possible samples, because we already know that it's a girl and that we have 12 of those. So what we are left with is the consideration of what percentage of those chose comedy. So what's the conditional probability that we select someone who prefers comedy, given that we know it's a girl? Again, pause the video and try this on Keats. So, if you found this correctly, you will notice that the conditional probability is 3 over 12. This is equal to 6 over 24, which is therefore the same as the marginal probability of choosing a sample where the movie preference is comedy. This gender tells us nothing about movie preference. They're independent. Thus, the definition of independence is that two events are independent if information on the value of P does not give any information on the value of A, and therefore that the joint probability is equal to the product of the marginals. This follows from what we've seen as joint probability is defined as the product of the conditional and the marginal. As independence creates equivalence between the conditional probability of A given B and the marginal of the probability of A, then it follows that the joint probability is equal to the product of the marginals. However, this is somewhat abstract, so a more intuitive way of thinking about it might be found through the associative concept of correlatedness. Correlation is normalised covariance, and independent events are uncorrelated. For two time series, this means that they are uncorrelated when they're out of phrase. This can be seen 
from this Wikipedia GIF, which shows that when two samples are highly linearly correlated, and so form a line where one is completely predicted by another, then this occurs when the time series are antiphase or in phase. So when these time series completely overlap or are 180 degrees out of phase. In terms of medical data, independent component analysis is most often used to separate out independent signals from functional imaging data. Most often, spatial independence is sought. What this means is that the method segments the imaging data into regions which have different patterns of brain activity, such that if you were to look at the overlap or correlation of these spatial maps, in terms of which voxels appear in more than one component, you will see that they are non-overlapping, uncorrelated or independent. Just one word of warning, however, while independent events are uncorrelated, lack of correlation is not sufficient for two events to be independent. Take this graph of y equals x squared and the definition of correlation. The mean or expectation of x is zero, as is the mean of the joint distribution, so correlation will be zero, however, x completely determines y, so they are clearly not independent. The reason for this divergence is that the correlation coefficient only detects linear first order dependencies. Further dependencies must be revealed with higher order statistics. For example, skewness and kurtosis. Thus, in summary, for two independent events, you will find that the conditional probability will be equal to the marginal and the joint probability will be equal to the product of the marginals. These events will be uncorrelated. However, don't fall into the trap of thinking that all uncorrelated events are independent. There may still be higher order interactions. This completes our lecture summarising statistical independence. Please make sure that you have completed the Keats quiz before moving on.